Norovirus, like the norovirus, are very common causes of gastrointestinal upset and are very infectious. In this lesson, we're going to talk about how we become infected with these viruses. We're also going to talk about signs and symptoms, how we can diagnose it, and how we can treat it, and most importantly, proper methods to prevent or reduce the risk of becoming infected with this virus in the first place. So the norovirus is a virus in the viral family Caliciviridae. These are small non-enveloped RNA viruses, and there are actually seven genogroups of the norovirus, but all of them have the same symptoms. So the norovirus causes an acute viral gastroenteritis. So important is it's acute, it's viral, and it's a gastroenteritis. So itis meaning inflammation. So inflammation of the gastrointestinal system. And in fact, the norovirus is so common that it's actually the most common viral cause of gastroenteritis worldwide. And the name norovirus actually is derived from the place of its first outbreak. And that place was actually Norwalk, Ohio, United States in the year 1968. So the norovirus is often called the Norwalk virus because of this reason. And the norovirus is more likely to occur in the winter months, most likely due to individuals being inside more often and in close contact, the virus can spread more easily. So it's also known as the winter vomiting disease. So how is the norovirus transmitted? It's transmitted through the fecal oral route. So if you see an individual who has the norovirus, you want to look at their family members. You want to look at family members with similar illnesses because those family members can easily pass it along to others through the fecal oral route. So how does this happen? So what happens is an infected individual can essentially become contaminated on their hands. They can touch different objects like fomites, which are objects like furniture. It can come from contaminated water sources. So if feces from an infected individual gets into water supply, it can lead to contaminated water. Individuals drinking that water can become infected. And related to this is also contaminated food supplies. So specifically leafy greens. So contaminated water is getting onto leafy greens. If those greens aren't washed properly, we can get the virus on those foods. And it's very virulent. It only requires very small amounts of virus to cause an infection, usually less than 100 viral particles. So even a small amount of virus can lead to an infection. And I alluded to this before, but the norovirus is shed in the stool from infected individuals. That is how it is transmitted. So again, it's shed in the stool and it's picked up in other places. An individual who's perhaps hasn't washed their hands properly can touch objects and contaminate those objects or can get into water or food. And what's really challenging about the norovirus is that it can be shed in the stool of an individual for approximately four weeks and even months in some patients, especially patients with immunocompromised. So even after individuals have gotten better, they've resolved the infection, they can still be shedding the virus for weeks. But the good news is that transmission of the norovirus is more likely to happen if a patient is symptomatic compared to if they're asymptomatic, but it can still happen if they're asymptomatic. And what's really challenging about the norovirus is that it is very, very stable in the environment. So because of this, we have special ways to deal with this virus, and we're going to talk about that in later slides. So once an individual does become infected, the incubation period is roughly 24 to 48 hours. So it takes about 24 to 48 hours after becoming infected with the norovirus to actually start showing symptoms. So how does the norovirus actually infect and cause illness? So what the norovirus does is it affects the gastrointestinal system, so the stomach and intestines. So what it does to the stomach is that it decreases gastric emptying. And it's hypothesized that this is actually the reason why norovirus causes nausea and vomiting. The norovirus has also been shown to cause lesions in the jejunum, which is a part of the small intestine. And the norovirus has also been shown to cause malabsorption by affecting the intestinal mucosa. And what it does is it reduces the activity of enzymes like trehalase and alkaline phosphatase, and it also inhibits the absorption of fats. So this is how the norovirus is likely causing diarrhea. So again, the norovirus is leading to decreased gastric emptying, jejunal lesions, and decreased enzyme activity of trehalase and alkaline phosphatase, as well as decreased absorption of fats, leading to diarrhea. So after the incubation period, Signs and symptoms of the norovirus occur suddenly. There's an abrupt onset of symptoms. And some of the most common symptoms of norovirus include abdominal pain, which is described as cramping in nature, and nausea and vomiting, like we mentioned previously. And the nausea and vomiting is actually the most common symptom of the norovirus. But what we do see is that the vomiting is non-bloody and non-bilious. We can also see watery diarrhea. 
Again, the diarrhea is non-bloody as well. And it's described as moderate diarrhea. It's not excessive like some other gastrointestinal conditions, but you do see four to eight bowel movements per day. But what we do see with the norovirus, and what is key to the norovirus, is that nausea and vomiting occur more often than diarrhea. So there are other viruses that cause an acute viral gastroenteritis, but if you see an individual with more vomiting than they are having diarrhea, it's more likely a norovirus causing the infection. And fever doesn't always happen. It's estimated that it occurs in approximately 50% of cases. Some of the other symptoms of the norovirus include myalgias, so achy muscles, headaches, and fatigue, so very tired. And what we do see is that symptoms of the norovirus last for about 48 to 72 hours. But what's important to recognize is that it may last longer in some individuals, particularly in individuals with immunocompromise. And those individuals have longer presentations and more severe presentations, so more severe symptoms. But we do also see some patients that become infected with the norovirus and are asymptomatic. And this seems to occur in approximately one in 10 patients. Even though they're asymptomatic, they can still shed the virus in stool, which means that they can still spread the infection. And even after a patient has resolved the infection, so what we do find is that the resolution of symptoms comes on very quickly as well. But even after they have recovered from the infection, they can still have symptoms after the infection. And some of these include heartburn and constipation. So some residual issues with the gastrointestinal system. So how do we diagnose and how do we treat the norovirus? So when we're diagnosing this infection, when we're looking at laboratory investigations, we often see a normal leukocyte count, but in some cases it can be mildly elevated. And this diagnosis is a clinical one. So we see a patient, they're having those symptoms we talked about before. We see that they're having more vomiting than diarrhea. So it's more likely to be norovirus causing the gastroenteritis and the symptoms resolve in 40 to 72 hours. That's a clinical diagnosis of norovirus. In some cases, they may also do a real-time qPCR, specifically in cases where they're looking for the source of an epidemic of the norovirus. So they want to make sure that the cases are actually the norovirus. So they actually use the real-time qPCR and detect the viral genetics of the norovirus. Once we make the diagnosis, what is the treatment? So as I mentioned before, the norovirus is a self-limited infection. The symptoms resolve spontaneously. So the treatment is supportive. So we want to make sure that the patient stays hydrated and we can also try to treat some of their symptoms like the nausea by using anti-nauseans. And there are some questions as to should we use specific diet when patients have the norovirus? And there's something called the BRAT diet, which stands for bananas, rice, applesauce, and toast. And there was some question as to should we use the BRAT diet to kind of help their symptoms or to maybe reduce the length of infection, but there doesn't seem to be any evidence to support this. And there's still some question as to, should we use probiotics when they have this infection? Should we use zinc? Again, the evidence here is weak. As I mentioned before, the norovirus is extremely stable in the environment. So we have to use specific methods to prevent it. And those specific methods are hand washing with soap and water. We have to use soap and water because it's actually resistant to alcohol sanitizer. So even if we use an alcohol sanitizer, that's not gonna cut it. The norovirus is actually resistant to alcohol sanitizers. And we have to use bleach to sanitize a contaminated environment. Other sanitizers don't work. The virus is too stable, it's too resistant. So we actually have to use bleach. So again, we need to use soap and water for hand washing. We can't use alcohol sanitizers with norovirus, and we have to use bleach to sanitize the contaminated environment. And there is no vaccine currently available. So there is still some work ongoing as to the development of a norovirus vaccine, but it is currently not available. So again, it's a clinical diagnosis of norovirus. We use real-time qPCR in the event of finding the source of a viral epidemic. Treatment is supportive. It's a self-limited infection, and prevention requires hand washing with soap and water, no alcohol sanitizers, and we need to use bleach to sanitize a contaminated environment. So if you wanna learn more about other infectious diseases, please check my infectious disease playlist. And if you haven't already, please consider liking, subscribing, and clicking the notification bell to help support the channel and stay up to date on future lessons. Live, laugh, and continue to always learn, and I hope to see you next time. Mm -hmm.